recently built a complete rack system for under $200 that can fit 18 tubs for all my new Caledonian geckos. And it was a complete disaster. Stick around while we go over exactly how I built this rack system, but more importantly, the mistakes I've made that you should avoid if you want to make a great DIY rack system for under $200. Let's get into it. What you guys are probably thinking at this point, that's going to be, Dakota, what's wrong with it? Thing looks pretty good. And yeah, it does look pretty good. However, what you expect a usual rack system to do is this when sliding out the tubs. Nice and easy, you know, not too much problems. Um, for about 80 to 90% of them, the tubs are like this. Yeah, mistakes were uh, definitely made with this thing. But before we talk about those mistakes, let's talk about the materials I made to get this for under 200. Well, you should note that there's supposed to be another level, but this thing just became such a disaster, I decided to scrap the top level because I'm gonna have to tear this down and do it all over again. So materials, pretty much what you are gonna be wanting or what we did here is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these four by two pallets, these little plywood, they're about a little under half an inch thick. Pretty much, I, I don't know if maybe some other Home Depots do this, but pretty much what you wanna do for this is get the four by eight pallets and then have the guy there cut them just so it doesn't fit in the car or something, they'll cut it for you. Probably a big pain in the ass for them, but hey, that's time spent, saved with you. Just mention that they need to be like pretty good cut. I found a couple of my boards are actually like, some are like four and a half, while some are three and a half, and it kind of fucks stuff up. So I had to go grab another board and cut it myself because I didn't trust people after that, but that's pretty much what you need for that. And then after that, I got two or four, four two by fours for the sides, and then I got three for here. So we're supposed to have two by fours drilled, so there's a stopper. However, like I mentioned, not much need for a stopper when the, to the tubs do that. <laughs> the only other things you guys need are actually just gonna be dry lock, just because this is plywood, not PVC, you wanna seal it. So all these bottom areas where the tubs are exposed to moisture, where the wood would be exposed, I sealed all the uh, bottom parts of this, and then just long screws and a power drill with a screw, and you're uh, you're good to go. It sounds like a super easy process. <laughs> and I, I too thought it was a super easy pro process. Then I started building it, and that's when my world came crashing down. So the dry lock, don't let the Home Depot guy oversell you. I bought two tubs of the dry lock and I used about maybe half a tub doing two thick layers onto this. You can usually do two to three. I did two and I was like, this thing's pretty, pretty sealed pretty well. I don't think I need a third one. I still have like half a tub and then a whole ass other tub. So just the usual paint can size of that dry lock, that'll do the job for you. You don't need any more than that. But before you shoot over to the Home Depot and start buying this stuff, just l let me explain some of the mistakes that I've made and how you can actually get some of these supplies for cheaper, it's end up spending less money and it's gonna work out for you a hell of a lot better. After really digging into this thing, investigating, seeing like, where did it really go wrong? I think I have three big contenders on why this rack system is a complete failure and actually, it just needs to be dismantled. I mean, it works, don't get me wrong, it works. I mean, it holds them in and some of them slide kind of easily. The, the issue is, like, while the geckos aren't going anywhere, I made this rack system to save space and be time efficient. This? <laughs> this is not time efficient. <laughs> while yes, you can obviously see I am big, strong alpha male, it's still a pain in the ass and takes a lot of strength. That's a home workout all by yourself. Forget dumbbells and barbells, just use this, build this as I, as I did, and by God, you just, it's the same thing. You're gonna get, you're gonna get the pump regardless if you want it or not. Let's go into some of the mistakes that I made. Number one, I think you're gonna want this a little longer than four feet. Four feet is too short. The issue was when I took the measurements, I took the measurements about right here, not putting the top lip in mind. So you gotta remember, while if we, if it was just talking about this size right here, whatever this uh, length is, I believe there it's like, 12 and a quarter or 12 and a uh, 12 and a third this exactly lines up for four feet which would have synced up absolutely beautifully however there's this there's these little lip things so really because you're supposed to put a lid not put them in a rack system right and the issue then became is it actually it put it pops out a little longer than it should which makes putting this like collapsing it into like these sides and getting it all nice very very difficult because while you're utilizing four foot of board, you have about four feet and two tenths of tub. 
and that's just not a measurement you want. Recommendation for you guys is actually get these boards about four and a half feet. The only issue is you are gonna have to buy more boards because it's not gonna be a clear even cut. There's gonna be some, you know, ones you that aren't usable, so you have to get another four by eight sheet. However, with that being said, it's gonna make your life so much easier. I, you can technically do these four foot boards it's just lining it up with this, with the stakes and the posts actually, it's gonna make it very difficult and you're gonna have to have like really long screws that kinda, it's just, there's like space between the posts but the screws are screwed in. It's very odd, it's awkward. Do yourself a favor, put an extra half inch on each board and you'll save yourself a lot of time and hassle. Move on to issue number two that I have found that you can one, save yourself money and a lot of hassle. That's gonna be using these two by fours as posts. Originally, you gotta remember, this is my this first ever DIY rack build. I didn't look up any tutorial because by God, you just put a slat on, you drill it and you just keep doing it. It seemed easy. It seemed like any, any idiot could do it. Not this idiot, I messed this up big time. The real issue with these two by fours is actually gonna be just how deep they go, how wide, can you, am I off camera? The issue is gonna be how deep they are, like how wide the actual board is. It makes it very difficult lining up, because remember, you're only getting up just a little less than half an inch of length. That's a lot of room for air. You know, you gotta make these things pretty precise. And when you have to go through this to then get the screw, if you're not screwing completely straight, you might be a little bit this way, a little bit this way. It, there's just a lot of room for mistake and you're gonna get screws that are gonna break the wood, go this way, that way, not connect at all with the piece. There's a lot of issues. So the two by four pose, while I thought I needed it to really keep the sturdiness and it, it is sturdy. I mean, it's not going anywhere. Granted, it's on a concrete wall for support. So that kind of helps it as well. Um, I, honestly, I think you can do a lot thinner pieces of wood. It's gonna save you some money. And you're just, again, it's gonna be a lot easier making that precise cut. At the end of the day, the posts themselves, unless you're very unless you're a skilled contractor like your boy is not then go for the two by fours that's fine but get getting some thinner pieces of wood to make sure you're going to be a little bit more precise a little less room for air it's going to save you a lot of time in the long run god i kind of saved my work for you guys to see it there's like eight eight screws inside one layer because i just kept fucking up and i didn't want to unscrew it because i got so upset so there's like five screws per level and that there's just one that actually made the cut in that Mistake number three that I made that you should definitely avoid doing and that's gonna be just putting the tub and then the slab on not having anything else to create a barrier to have some room and space to make this like this again not like well that one's kind of easy not like all the middle ones are a little easy. You guys saw all before, you know what I'm saying. Being completely honest with you guys, I'm not 100% sure what to use for this. If you guys saw when I do videos over there, there's like a spare junk wood pile and I found this board in here. I think it's like bossel wood. You see how thin that is? That would be perfect. To, oh my God. It'd be perfect to just put on top of this right here and then screw it in and then take this out. So then you'll have a little bit of a barrier that creates a little bit bigger of a gap. So it just makes the sliding a little bit easier, a little bit more airflow, a couple of things like that. At the end of the day, you don't wanna to get too big of a gap. I tried at first just leaving the lids on and then when it was done, oh, taking the lids off and doing it and it just created too big of a gap where I thought the geckos could almost get out of. So I feel like that that's good enough to create just a little bit of space where the sliding will be easier, but not enough to risk the gecko, not even just getting out, but attempting to get out you know he's gonna get a bunch of nose rub trying to get himself out the gap's a little big he gets stuck he could get out i mean there's a bunch of things that could go wrong man honestly i'm just i'm a little embarrassed of this but hey you know what it's my first time I i'm gonna cut myself some credit boys and girls you know what it was my first ever time trying this i think it's fine some of these don't even have screws like this level this doesn't have a screw you can just move this this level doesn't have one either i think it's screwed on the other side it is just it is the poorest excuse for a rack system you could ever think of. However, there's just there's too many issues with it. Um, I, I think the best short is that balsa wood I mentioned a little bit earlier, getting a little bit thinner pieces. We do actually have another one because I took all the 8x4 sheets. So instead of getting two 4x8s, I got four 4x8s. I think the math adds up on that. Maybe it doesn't. I don't remember. But we are going to have, so one of them is going to be here and then another one's going to be right here and all this little baby, all my, you know, end of 2023 holdbacks or 2023 for sale, which by the way, huge Black Friday sale, DakotaBlueExotics.com. Link in the description. Go check it out. Buy one, get one free. That's a pretty good deal. I would go see it. 
decided not to make it buy one get one free maybe it's buy one get one 50 percent off i don't really know at the end of the day we're gonna have two so i have another shot at trying this out we're gonna try the little steps that i decided to make from the mistakes that i've realized i've made and then once we feel like we got we got a good grasp once we pick, figure out rack system 2.0 that it's just a regular rack system without all the mistakes, then I'll come back, deconstruct this, and get it going. The issue is we kind of have to do that soon. Remember, our gargoyles, which are mostly in here right now, they're breeding right now. We've already paired them up. However, everything right here for the most part, except a little bit of those things down there, those are going to be ready to breed this year as well. And on, and on. And honestly, the only reason why they're still in there is because I don't have this rack system built yet. So hopefully we can get it done right this time. I'd love to see it once the two rack systems are up. We're going to do another reptile room tour and show you guys the new place, how we're utilizing everything. But just want to show you guys. I, I like I like putting my mistakes out on YouTube so people don't have to make it. It doesn't seem a lot or really anyone's making videos on DIY gecko rack systems. You'll see a billion for like rats, leopard geckos, um, ball pythons, of course for like a new Caledonian rack system. So I threw my hat in the ring. It is the worst new Caledonian rack system you'll ever have, but it's also the best because I think it's the only video on YouTube. <laughs> Hopefully at the end of all, we can get this figured out. Maybe I'll do another video showing you the right way to build a rack system. But if that wasn't enough content for you guys, you guys want to check out some of my geckos, I highly recommend this video right here, pairing all the gargoyle geckos, or maybe you just want to see a playlist of all of the geckos we have that are mostly in there right now. As always, thank you guys so much for taking the time of your day to follow us over here at Dakota Blue Exotics. I will see you guys next time, but until then, goodbye.